Antonio Martínez Machán, from Tijuana, California, México. This is the Teacher Do Podcast. And from Portugal, João Jardim. Jardim. Onda, señor arquitecto. What's up, Mr. Architect? How are What's you? What's up, my brother? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, let's keep it in English. Yeah, yeah. Wanna... yeah let's yeah. keep it in English. Uh, so, hi. Um, I'm are you? calling you from, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm really good. Uh, enjoying the summer, the this side of the world summer. Uh, it's really hot. Even now it's, it's nighttime and it's really hot still. I'm sweating. But anyway. Can you, can, you, can you imagine all that, that, that hot weather? Because over here it was hot. And yeah. I had Fires to and shit. With my, the beach is like about 15 minutes to the west. And it feels so, so. Uh, I know that. I know the like, originally I'm from an island. I'm, I'm not from the mainland. I'm from Madeira Island. And it's really green and it's it's humid. Like you have um, almost like a double, how would you say, like a double weather. Like near the ocean, you have some weather. It's kind of foggy. Sometimes it's sunny. Sometimes most of the time it's foggy due to this microclimate and it's humid all the time. But here <laughs> I, I, I'm in I'm in uh, Cascais near Lisbon and it's kind of dry but i have the mountains and the sea around so i don't know it's the season it's crazy really crazy really crazy weather the very very crazy weather so let's let's keep it in in in, in on the didgeridoo uh, yeah. team tell me, tell me um uh, where how did you how you where and when okay. you listen like, the first didgeridoo and then when you started to play? Uh, so I believe that like there was a connection the first time, but I believe when I was a kid, when I was really young, I used to watch a lot of, um, you know, History Channel, Geo, Nat Geo, like, you know, Natural Geographic Channel and everything. And I, I, I've must have seen Aborigines and I kept it. And I, I've always been connected to nature. I always loved to camp and everything. But basically, I was a skate rat, like skating every day, all the time. Uh, and one day, I was in a, in a concert, and there was this Portuguese group called Blasted Mechanism. They still exist, but they evolved in a more electronic way. Uh, still still cool, but uh, they don't have the Juridu, I believe, uh, now. But uh, back then, uh, it was amazing. Like, they had sitars, they had guitars, uh, the drummer was amazing, a lot of effects, but they started with the didgeridoo. And the funny thing is, I was like, um, I was in a fight, separating dudes and everything. And so I had this rush, you know, like you had this, I had this rush from after the, you know, the mess and everything. And the, yeah. out of nothing, I hear like, like the screamings on the didgeridoo. And I was like, dude, what the, like, I even get the goosebumps right now. Like it's same, same <laughs> feeling. Like I remember looking at the stage and I, okay, let's go there. Like I, I was glued. I was like, what the hell is that? Like I've listened to this before, but I don't know what it is. And it's like, it's doing something really good for me. Back then in Madeira Island, nobody played the Dree dude. Like nobody knew what it was. This was back in, 2006 i believe yeah 2006 no 2007 because i uh, i still had like a year of uh shall i play this instrument shall i not like but i was really i i, I need one like i was talking to people my friends and everything and then there was uh like these uh how do you say flea markets from world world fairs you know that bring instruments you know, there's those instruments from Thailand, like copies of Aborigine instruments, like made in tea, I believe, like they're worldwide. They're spread all over the place. So I got, like, I went there, ah, and I had a friend. He was a musician, like skater, but playing the guitar. And he, and he like, it was easier for him to know more about the instrument. He was like, dude, we can do this with a simple PVC pipe. 
And back then, like, it started, like, watching videos on YouTube. When it first started, I believe, like, I, I wasn't, like, YouTube wasn't a thing still. Uh, you know, those videos from, I think it was from Jonathan Coop and another guy from the UK where they teach you how to circular breathe with a straw and everything. Like, I watched all those. But still, there was no other didgeridoo player in Madeira. Nothing. And when I moved in 2008, when I moved to Lisbon to study architecture, uh-huh. on the first day, I met Ortal Peleg and Tiago, Tiago Franschini. And it was the first time I ever saw, like, and talked to somebody else that played the instrument. And Tiago was already playing really well, like, t- screaming tunes, had rhythms and everything. Back then, he was really a fan of uh, Renato from Olive Tree. Mm. It was really cool. The, but because of... I think it was another friend of mine who was like, dude, check this out. And uh, I watched Gautier. I watched the video of Gautier. I think it was in Lyon. If you write down on YouTube, Gautier Lyon, done. Like, you'll, you'll watch this. And I was mesmerized. And from the channel of Will, the, the guy who made those videos, big up, um, I, I found uh, a video of Zalem playing on the toilet. And I was like, dude, this is ridiculous. Like, it's, it has nothing to do with the other styles I've been listening to. It's more appealing. It's more, I don't know, more suitable for my, my influences, my, my background of music. Because I, I never played an instrument before. Never, ever. Nothing. But my dad, I, had, I, I listened always to good music, like jazz, uh, rock and roll, like good classic, good basics. Um, and like, I think it was that that provided the, a rich background to it, to try out some stuff. But basically it was this, like, concert, moved to Lisbon, met Tiago in Nortal. Me and Tiago, we got best friends uh, for personal reasons even. Uh, but the instrument brought us together. Still one of my best friends in the world. Um, and yeah, it was that. Like, I stumbled upon the French style, let's say. Of uh, Gautier and Zalem, and I started studying the instrument. And then, uh, probably in 2009, Roderick, another great player from Portugal, uh, came from Barcelona and he had already workshops with everybody. Like, he, he was playing a lot, like, r- like the level pff, ridiculous. And he basically told me, like, dude, uh, you want to play this instrument? This is the metronome. Uh, you can write down your phrases, you can do this, you can do that. So I started stepping up and up and up and up, but always like, I'm not a, mu- like with this feeling, I'm not a musician, you, you know, like it was this, I think it was maybe the Ditch to Ditch or, or uh, Kai Allen, the band, the group I, I made with the Kipsau and Zay. And then uh, uh, some years later, uh, Sebastian Bergman came in for the percussions, but basically I was always going to concerts, always like studying in the background, but never assuming like I, I could I could be a musician. Like, but yeah, <laughs> in, always like I I played the YouTube, but I'm not a musician. <laughs> yeah, like it's a passion. It's literally a passion. Like nowadays I'm not playing as much. I'm more focused in my architecture work. A, a bit due to COVID, like COVID kind of created the situation where music and everything was kind of difficult. And those two years, uh, I kind of uh, focused more on architecture, and that's what I, I'm, I'm doing the most. But I still play. Uh, if somebody asks me for a concert or anything, I don't even ask for money because it's a passion. It's literally what I, I love to play this system. I love to listen to it. I love the community around it. And that's it. <laughs> so you are very young, a, a young dude, right? I'm 34 right now. Not so, Not young. so young, exactly. But still, still young. I'm, I'm 38. I almost, almost 40. And I was like very shocked when when I was with Salem here in the, the, in the okay. podcast. Yeah. And I, I'm older than him. Well, five days. <laughs> Uh, five days, five. ridiculous. It's in January, yeah? <laughs> yeah so your birthday I must be like, what, 16? 16 of January? January 2nd. 
Your your birthday, January the second. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> he is like oh, yeah. five days. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> the seventh. Okay, okay. So, nice. And, and and did you? How did you started to to or or you have been involved with a, with a APD APD because um, you are from Portugal, so the APD the well, association. They, I can tell you a little is, bit about them. Like uh, they they were really important because back then there was no social media, almost like there was no Facebook, there was mm -hmm. no like. There were, there were, but not everybody was using. But you had these blogs, like you, the forums, like the French forum was amazing. Uh, and you had the a APD forum. And it was through them that I met Tiago and Hortal. And, well, Ricardo and the other interview, Ivo, José João, they're amazing people. But Portugal is not really, like, I'm not ditching out on my country, but it's a fact, like, Playing didgeridoo is not a really rentable thing. Like you really have to either like give a lot of concerts, play busk a lot. Like it's it's tough. It's really tough. There's no support from the state. I believe in Mexico must be the same. But they do their best, and every year they like sometimes not, but every year they they try to make this gathering and they do it the best they can, and it's amazing. I've never been a part of the association, but if they want. If they want a concert, I'll play for free. They they, they give a lot. They they're amazing. They're really great people. Ortiz, as well, like big up for them. Like they're really cool. I remember some of your videos that when I was starting to play in 2012. This this is, is like a like a warehouse. It was we, everything was that, white, yeah. Like, yes, my I, favorite. I cannot even watch those videos, dude. It's It, but it's cool that I recorded them because it's a phase, you know, like, like if I didn't record them, then maybe we wouldn't be here. I don't know. Like, because it was the, like, Hudi was like, dude, uh, I need videos from you to send for, for ditch to ditch, you know? And I was gonna, uh, uh, me and Kai Allen, we were gonna play in a yoga retreat. And that was like the, the backstage of the thing underneath the, the building. It was kind of a, like um, a warehouse. So it had this huge echo and the, the filming was really crappy. So yeah, <laughs> sorry for anything there. But do you, it, do you have that didgeridoo? I have that didgeridoo. And um, yeah. it's fr like, I don't have the, like on those, on those, like it's a sequence of videos. I have the black one, which is a Ferroni uh, chromatic one. Not chromatic, like I asked, I asked him to be a chromatic, the Carlo Catano model, which is thicker. Mm -hmm. And the guy sent me, I think it's the Marcus Maurer model. Uh, so you know it, uh, he's been there. It's the same as Marcus Maurer, but I don't have G, dude. I need a low G. So a low if anyone G, wants to make it, yeah, low G. What, what, like, what is your, your, your ideal, your ideal didgeridoo? Well, as sound or key, like which which keys I go for more? Yeah, oh yeah. I, let's They're... let's tell you all about. Like, <laughs> I believe like everybody has their own pitch, like your own voice, your own like I, I've, like my my drone when I'm always talking, it's in C sharp D, and actually it's the keys I I like the most, like from C. To D sharp. That's what I like. Like I'll be playing that all day long. No worries. C, no worries. D, that's the thing. But I really like Fs and Es. But for specific approaches, like you know that white ditch where I that white ditch is a, it's a wood from Madeira Island. So I'm not gonna like. I have one for sale, but that one specifically, I'm not gonna sell it. Mm -hmm. um, Because of memories and everything, but it's a really it's a really cool key for those approaches for the like to play around with the toots, uh, with those Andre attack where your your jaw kind of helps the tongue to you know, um, and some some types of beatbox. But overall, now I'm going into shapes. Mm -hmm. Back like 
this is a, a thing like you discover through throughout your maturity in your playing. Like, because when you start playing, you don't know, you know nothing. You just grab a ditch and you you buff it. And after yeah. several several years, you change ditch, and the better the ditch, the better the evolution. Yes. And, uh, what I was gonna say, yeah. So nowadays I like open bores, not like maybe not the the openness as Rudy is playing right now with the Ujazi signatures. They're they're amazing. I've never tried one actually, but I bet they must be uh like tough, like because the the wider the bore in my this is my perspective, for yeah, yeah. sure you're gonna reflect here or not but in my perspective the wider the bore the more you have to bring out from your body you know like you, your diaphragm your mm-hmm. even like it punches you like okay if i want to keep the the volume i'm used to if i want to keep this time di- the um, you know the resistance the play, being dynamic. able to play for long dynamics and fast uh you need to practice like and it's it's a, it's amazing when you have a, an instrument that pushes from you like uh, because the the jury is it's like it's a way of speaking but it, it's yeah. always i feel like if i don't play for two months or a month i'm gonna resent it like i i, I need to go fetch my dad and play not even for five minutes but it's a thing like my lungs my skin my my brain i don't know like i need to play that i'm a, i'm addicted to it <laughs> um, and get, yeah, it's cherry. good when you when when you have these. Normally, I'm used to play with the the um, the toots tuned on the third third minor. I had the D with the third major, like the harmonics were amazing, like really sharp and crispy. But uh, why this? Because back in the day, I used to play with tighter necks with the toot tuned in the octave. Mm-hmm. Which allowed me to be more able, like I could play faster from the two to the drone. Like the jump is like two pump, 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 pump. Like you can change really mm-hmm. fast. Um, but overall, you lose that bore, you lose that body of harmonics. The like I even discovered new types of harmonics with your tongue, like you know, like instead of wee wee, like so. There's a lot of more room for different sounds i think in the open neck the open door yeah in the awesome thing that it's i, I think that no one has been experienced an open bore like five centimeters two mm-hmm. inch and having the tooth on their duct tape mm-hmm. on their duct tape i just made two like that and okay try to oh, fucking one like that Having the two like the first but the, two, like, but they're longer, no? Like because this is another thing. I, uh, my digits they're long, but not that long. You know, like this this wideness sometimes compensates um, tuning wise. They compensate like you don't need that much length. But I've played in the same key, like, and I've played in an old um, agave C C. Like the first it was in C. And it was amazing, Same. but really dark, really like the drone was really dark. Like it's cool, That's, but uh-huh. because I'm not because I'm uh, used to uh, tuning them on the third. Like if it's a D, I put it in an F. Uh, um, yeah, exactly, an F or or F sharp if I want a major chord. If it's um, a C, I put it in an E or a D flat. Like, and this kind of creates the rich harmonics in my point of view, like in my case. Yes, because I just made one eucalyptus and it's uh, C mm-hmm. with B trumpet. The first two, there's a B tr- just half step under. And okay. Play okay. It just like this. Yeah. I, I just, Dude, you've been making, lately I've been watching some videos of yours, like even, um, it's tunable, like you dismantle them, but you have you have a slide now. It's no, not I slide. It's just pure multi drone. You can just mo- uh, drop octave, and there's a multi drone there. Maybe not the full yeah. spectrum. But... Yeah, I don't make the the the, the slides because mm-hmm. over here the the material is very expensive. Yeah. And here, here I, the same. 
and I just uh, do the the detachable. That's it. But yeah. that one, always I imagined you playing that one. It, 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 it blows my mind. I always imagine like fucking pinche yo hago. How would he? No mames, este cabrón. Always think like that because the, the all in I relate that uh, video with that did you do? Y este cabrón, nice. este cabrón, ¿cómo le haría aquí? Tra, tra, tra. Wow. The thing is, you have to, like, I can write down after the, the phrase for you, but the thing is, it has to be there. Like the hi hat, you cannot lose it. That's the groove of the thing. And it's easier when you do one, do one, dance, to one, <laughs> you have very second. Give me a yeah. second. Well, you have very strong, very strong that or whatever that is like a like it's a, a clap. It's a it's a like from the back of your tongue. Like imagine this is your tongue, and you put this next to your like your palate and. You open slightly, and you can breathe on it. Ay, cabrón. Oh, fuck. I don't breathe. Actually, I don't breathe on this because I breathe on. It's like um, kind of um, the technique of uh, Dubravko, kind of. Attention all personnel. This is not. I'm a fuller. <laughs> <laughs> Why it's difficult for me? I'm a pusher. Yeah. Ah. This box, it does the trick, but it doesn't. <laughs> no, anyway. Man. But maybe one day we can, um, I don't know, uh, gather some people or I'll do something personal for you. But if you if you have some people that would like on that side of the world that would like uh, a, a little tutorial or whatever, you know, I bring wanna... it on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even in Spanish, I, I could try. I could try. See, Just you're... writing down is the fucked up thing. And how, how do you, living in, in Portugal, it's like very crazy. How how many languages do you speak? In port me, yeah. I speak Portuguese. I speak French, Spanish, and English, and that's it. Yeah, French? for a language. Yeah, French, because like I, um, the thing is in Portugal, if you travel around, this is a thing. Like other Latin countries, if you go to Spain, nobody speaks oh. nothing besides Spanish. Nothing besides Spanish. Uh, in France. The same, and uh, Italy the same, but in the north, if you go more to Torino, Milano, places where they have more commercial wise, not the touristic part, the commercial wise, where they produce like fabrics, uh, fashion design, whatever, they speak pretty much good English. But here in Portugal, like we depend a lot on tourism, and we had the a lot like just to sum it up, we had fascism until not so long ago. So uh -huh. we depended a lot on income from England, France, France because of the wine, England because of colony exploitation and everything. So in general, ah, and we uh, and we don't um, we don't dub the, the the movies like movies come with the the original language like Simpsons, everything like we we're used to subtitles. Okay, okay. So the sound is there and. In school, until the seventh grade, you have English and French. Ah, That's come on. Yeah. So, so, for us in general, we speak English and French is easy because of the language, but I needed a girlfriend. 
It was because of when I, I was going to, to France because of the Chitudej and concert and this, I uh, met someone and it was really nice. And I learned French because of her. Oh, so, so, so awesome. That's crazy. I learned English not because I like it, because over here, Tijuana, it's like isolated of the rest of the Republic. Okay. If you see that the map, it's Tijuana, uh, Baja California State. Yeah. And then it's another little city. Uh, it calls San Luis Rio Colorado. And then it's a very big gap of Sonora Desert. It's like more than one thousand five five hundred kilometers of desert. There is wow. nothing. Wow. We are more uh, close to the north over there, mm -hmm. San, San Diego, California. And back in the nineties. There was no uh, Spanish programming programming in the TV. In back in the nineties, it was no SAP. That, that like, helps. Pol en español, yeah, no, no, es que es en inglés, no, pol en español, no. Oh, in, in, back in the in the days, I saw the first uh, episode of Pokemon in, in English. My mom says uh, that I was like, like, blah, 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 blah. like be exactly because when you're a kid, you start like jamming with the word, even the songs. Like yeah, yeah, nowadays, yeah. I remember like how I used to sing some songs as a kid, dude. I was, I was making up words like shit, dude. It was amazing. I, I was really creative. Yeah, but that definitely helps. Like if you don't dub movie, like. From experience, I really see the difference between at least uh, Portugal and Spain. Like, it's not that they're dumber or whatever. The thing is, we I think we're more prepared to learn our other other language, at least to learn them. You know. Yeah, it's it's so awesome. In speaking these four languages, languages, oh, languages on the did we do? Have you thought about it? How we did spoke about. How did these four languages help you with the didgeridoo playing? It, it, for me, right. English and, and Spanish helps a lot. But I also uh, try to do some phrases in Nahuatl and Purepecha, like Popocatepetl, 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 Istlacihuatl, Popocatepetl, or this one. Try to repeat, Parangaracutirimicuaro. I almost got it at first. Parangara, parangara, parangara kutirimikwaro. Parangara kutirimikwaro. Fuck. Like that, that's the thing. Like I think Portuguese, we use a lot the language, the the tongue, and the like. If you contrast like the Portuguese, the Italian, the French, and the Spanish, these four Latin languages, the Portuguese. I, I feel the Portuguese uses more the like the rrr, the tranga tranga like that's those sound like nye, like juan, like these nasal sounds. Mm -hmm. It's every day we use it every day at all, all the time. So those it's kind of easy for us a bit it, like to play yeah. around with those accents and those the, articulations. So the Portuguese, uh, the, Portuguese. You falo Portuguese. You follow Portuguese. That's Brazilian. Você fala Portuguese? That's Brazilian. And how, how's the difference between uh, Brazilian and Portuguese? Okay, so they open a lot the vowels. Oh. And no, it's like A, I, E, A, and it's kind of singed. I, I reckon it's uh, like we like we explored a lot of Africa and we were basically one of the first countries sending Africans as slaves and everything. So yeah. Brazil is is full like there is a rich african culture there and you can feel it in the music in the language especially in the language and the music and um also the brazilians uh, the Brazil, the italians like there's a huge influence from italian which is more saying ah, John, come esta, eh? so the brazilian is a slow like they can be fast but i feel it's slower because mm -hmm. we eat a lot the word so it's more like Talk about it. Like they, they, they sing more, and it's more kind of Italian feeling. That's that's what I reckon. And how's it, and how did did these four languages back in the did you do okay. help helped you to the did you do playing? Or do well, you first, 
in influence on your playing? Like that's that's something that we were talking about uh, a second ago uh, before the interview, and I really would like to like it's a thing mm -hmm. that I, I talk about with other ditch players and everything. Um, so basically, uh, can I, give me just a second here. Basically, because I speak English well, it was really easy for me, let's say, uh, to, um, to at least to get information because most of the information about at least playing and constructing is in English. Come on. And Same. then the French, like because I already had it in school, it really helped when I figured out which style and now I'm going to step into that direction which style yeah. I wanted to play, because I feel that we Portuguese and some areas, like some Spanish player, maybe the Latins, because your accent is different than the traditional Spanish, let's say. Um, uh -huh. I feel that we tend more to go, to, like if you think about, let's say, established style, like for example, Uh, many people call this the French style, the wobbles and the we want we want we want we want we want we want like like this good year, like which is amazing. Like like he, they met uh, Alan Dargin in Ash Dargin, I think, and they they brought they brought the double jaw breathing and created the wobble. The anyway. And I found, as I was saying in the beginning, like when I was listening to Rudy and um, to, to Zalem the first times, I was like, dude, this is the, the approach I want. But it was only after developing playing and the articulation that you see that, okay, I'm more inclined to this. Because the way you speak, the way you articulate, as we were trying back in a second, influences a lot, like your breaks, your your style, like uh, like... I don't know, like, I feel like the more Northern European you are, the more punchy and, uh, you know, aggressive you are. Also, the time signatures, they tend to go into sevens, nines, for example, thirteens, which is cultural for them. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, the French have the, the walls. Like, they're used to... Like, it's a, it's threes, you know? One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. Like, for example, like, yeah. <laughs> like, for example, uh, you have this amazing player from Spain, two amazing players out of the bunch, but two of them that brought bulerias, like the flamenco style, like 13, uh, 12 time signature, 12 by 4 time signature, uh, Ivan Nicolai, and also Tomas Carro, big up. Uh, those two motherfuckers, like, they brought their own you know, like their own thing, like Andridge. Andridge, when I met Andridge, was amazing because, like, I was already playing, I was already studying the instrument and styles and this and that. And yeah. when I saw the first video, he was trying out the Chad Butler, if I if I believe. Mm -hmm. Like, it was ridiculous. I was like, what the hell is this? Like, <laughs> is this, like, this is not the do Like, what the fuck is he doing? Like, it's, it was amazing. It was Like the sensation was ridiculous. It was really good. Cool. And uh, he basically stood several years without playing, without knowing he was playing the Dridu, but developing a style within time signatures and with motives that are, and he talks about this in his music and everything. Like it's from where he's from and this is how he speaks. And Can't it's work. amazing. And only after several years of playing and again the mat maturity you get after you know your own body your, your own limitation your own way you want to play how you want to do things it's when when you discover like these things like okay these guys that are from more northern europe they have this style they're more punch italians they tend to go more to that style still here with the wobbles and everything it's it's beautiful it's amazing not us they're doing amazing like dan flynn William Thorin. Now, for example, we were talking about uh, an amazing, like, because nowadays it's difficult. And this is another part of my life. And maybe because the didgeridoo world is not so big in Mexico. And uh, maybe you've never been victim of this, but for a long time I was playing didge and people were like, ah, oh, you're like a copycat of Zalem. 
or you're a copycat of a uh, Gautier. And it was kind of hard because I was studying it, trying out my own shit, but people yeah. were already identifying. And nowadays, I think after a while, like people know this is a thing. Like it's it's a uh, it's a consequence of the niche, you know. Like it's there's a world to be explored. And nowadays you have figures like uh, William Goldschmidt bringing singing, uh, beautiful melodies and. Being musical with an instrument, you know, like Dan Flynn, like everyone has their own beautiful color, you know, and to add to the palette. And that's the amazing thing. These dudes discovered things on the didgeridoo and they are like for us. To, it's, it's like a, a, a guitar player. Who was the, the first motherfucker who, who started to do in the guitar? And not exactly like medieval, medieval guitar players and now everybody like blah, 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 blah. and then who started to play like andy mckee like um antoine dufour in a one page whatever yeah 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 of course this other this this other uh fingering style john gom that play percussion in in, in string guitaring in in shit but the world needs those dudes so the game can evolve, you know, like... Yeah, the DJ like, do. It's Dude, it's I, I don't want to... In the DJ yeah. world, like, as, as I said, like, you have styles. And the styles are, in my opinion, for sure, yours, like, the stars are influenced from where you're from. Uh, like, this is a fact. And... 10 years ago or 20 years ago, for me, this is my opinion, in France, the level was already like, like, yeah, the UK was already doing it for a long time, yeah. but not as efficient, you know, like, I felt that technically or musically, it evolved more in France due to these figures like Kelu, uh, Rudy, Gauthier, that were influenced by other people. Like, yes. Ice Full Beatbox was probably one of the first dude I, I actually met the dude he came to listen you know this guy no who eyes full didgeridoo check it out there's a video of the dude i, I think he's french I, yeah he's french eyes eyes oh, full eyes okay. full didgeridoo he's got a video playing in um in amsterdam check it out bro like it's really really old man and Dude, he influenced so many people. And you see, like, you don't even know the dude. And never heard of him. You know, like, and you do beatbox on your digital, you do like motherfucker, like, like a bro. <laughs> First of all, I don't have nothing against beatboxers, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't do beatboxing. Exactly. Exactly. Like, I like it, but. The level right now, I cannot even scratch the surface, dude. I, I don't do it. I don't do it. When people think that I'm doing a, like a, a bass playing because my didgeridoo has the, the uh, a very low trumpet, I play a 16 of a note of the toot and it sounds like a bass drum. Like I'm doing... <laughs> Yeah, but and okay. it's like sorry to cut you. I, I talk a lot, bro. I'm sorry. Tino. Sorry to cut you. No, no, no. That that for me is like I probably do more beatbox with like these snares. They come from beatbox. Like that. That's definitely like come on. But I this is a fact. I was never into hip hop when I was a kid. I was really rock head, like punk. Then when I went to uh, like started like calming down, reggae was always there since I was a kid, like my dad and everything, but always in a rock groove, like Peter Tosh and so hip hop and uh I, I liked it, like some some good music, like Portish Head, whatever, like some good musicians. There, there are so many talented ones. But the thing is, it was never a thing. And when uh when I saw the potential of adding beatbox to the ditch was amazing. But what I was doing was I called it ditch box, like the beatbox to do to play the jury do, you know, like that was how, how I saw things. And as soon as you put like a tss, 
Like you're just wobbling in Pumach instead of a toot, for example. People used to say, oh, no, that's that's horrible. That's beatbox. And I was like, dude, that's not beatbox. That's just putting that's a chip. Like Dubravko. Like these, you had these purists, you know, like you had to play either trad or either something directly deviated from traditional. And dude, <laughs> I love, I love trad playing. I love I love I, it. I, I made a meme. I made a meme that the the more dense uh, materials in the no, the the heaviest. But it's in Spanish. I don't. I don't think that the the heaviest or the dense uh, uh, materials or things in in the universe, the neuron stars, the sun, okay. the planets. Balanda players that it's like only play traditional. <laughs> exactly, dude. What? I respect. I respect I it, dude. I really do, and I yeah. love it. I really do. And sometimes I play it. Sometimes when I'm in my car, and you've seen it at Ditch to Ditch. There was one Ditch to Ditch. I don't know who was it. They gave me a Yidaki to play it, dude. Uh, anyway, like my my style is not made for Yidaki, so I grabbed the Yidaki. And I was like, <laughs> but dude. For me and from my experience of meeting Aborigines and people that been there and everything, if you if you really mimic a traditional song, please be aware of the the background of that song because you can be playing the funeral song of the mother of the another dude. Like it could be offensive, you know. So, like you have these uh, how do you say these approaches. The double job read, the drill, 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 like the two okay. uh, types of screen, everything yeah. like Our from is. from tribe to tribe, whatever. Like uh, it's a world. Mm -hmm. But if you want to play a song, try to at, at least. This is my advice, not to you, but to the world. Like, oh no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Humbly, yeah. Hum from what I know, from what people told me, like it could be risky to copy a song. You know, like. Uh -huh. Create your own, but be fully aware of what the elements that you're adding mean. Exactly. Okay? It's, just it's like if some stupid son of a gun tried to make uh, my national anthem in any uh, place, like whatever, or he changed something in the in the lyrics, it will be offensive. It's the exactly. same thing. It's the same it, thing. It can be more personal, you know. It can be yeah, more personal. exactly, exactly. L like, uh huh? No, no. Go on. I was gonna introduce you to someone. Maybe you know the guy, but he's close by to you. And there is he a, okay. Th there is a video of uh, a dude on Jidaki story. It, it was translated from Log Martin that it says that uh, John Lu people that uh, Jidaki is a gift for Balanda. So Balanda can be Balanda and express like a Balanda, not try to be not like Yolungu. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. That's the, the main point. And yes, you can practice to kind of do the, the, the traditional but respect, give homage to the instrument, you know, like and be aware that uh, the, the 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 phrases, the patterns, the all the, that stuff, it's meaningful. Meaningful for them, yes, yeah. exactly. And exactly. some like some phrases, like imagine if you put a drill, drill, that, drill, drill, that, like imagine when you're constructing your phrase, like some this is composition. Like most of my music comes from jamming. Like I'm jamming. Oh fuck this! This is cool. And I repeat and repeat. And then sometimes if I'm lucky, I write it down and okay, and I start like adding pieces. Those pieces added added together sometimes. That's where I was meant. Like you can play them separately, but be aware of what they are and if connected, what they can be. Uh, the thing is, I uh, I met Aborigine people, but I met a guy, a Balanda, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in France actually. But uh, he lives in Texas and he's originally from Iran, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Mm -hmm. Big up to Omid, man. The guy Omid. is a freaking artist, yeah. amazing and. He's su such a beautiful person, dude. Like, he's, like, let me, uh, really quick, let me tell you about the story. It was a uh, Hevla Borijana went. Uh, I wasn't going to play. It was really cool because 
people saw me at the door and they were like, no, no, dude, and you're going to stay and you're going to camp here. And they gave me like one of the best tents near the artists and everything. It was really cool. Any, anyway, there was a morning I woke up and he arrived like he was really next to me. And he didn't like he didn't play. He didn't say who he was and didn't say nobody he was really. Hey, good morning. Blah, blah. He had a beautiful English in France. It's, uh, it's hard to, to find anyway. And the guy like. I woke up, I grabbed, I drank some water, ate some shit, uh, drank, uh, like, I never, I don't like to play uh, after eating, like, it's uh-huh. a thing. Mouth and digest, anyway. So I, I clenched my mouth, whatever, and I started playing, and the guy was like, dude, you're amazing, like, I love how you do beatbox and this and that. And I was like, oh, okay. And I showed him a couple of things, but, dude, he was such a listener, like, he was really... And I was like, okay, this guy probably is a dancer. He's something not related to the we do. Like, whatever. Like, he was really eager to learn. So, in my point of view, and from people I know, like, it's it's rarer. And in this community, there's a lot of people like this. Anyway, due to weight, I wasn't expecting. When we went down and blah, blah, I was in the stands trying out some digits. Dude, I listened to the most amazing track playing ever. Dude, it was the guy. It was the dude. It was on me. Like, oh my god! Like, what do you want to <laughs> learn from me? Like, what the hell do you want to learn from me? Like, you play like, like, dude. I, I would risk say like a good movie. Like, he's amazing. Like, he's really, like, if you close your eyes, you're really and he's there. Like, the textures, like, he really does it. And he was actually one of the people that told me, dude. Be aware because this is elements of nature. Like what I play is like the the dribbles in the water, like the stones, the birds in the sky. Like he creates his own patterns through through the language that he learned through, with the Aborigine. I think that's a really interesting people a person that that you should have on your podcast on your interviews. Uh, he will be rich for sure. Like his experiences, uh, yeah. Besides yeah. being a beautiful person. You have to watch my first podcast. Is it with him? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it for sure. It's amazing. Uh, awesome. awesome. No, but no, no worries. No worries. Right now is with you 34? 34? Yeah, I think. I'm the 34th? Yes. Yes. Dude, uh, not only for me, but for the people listening, where can we find all the? In my YouTube channel, there is a, there is a playlist. I I'm, okay. when I'm when I'm uh, uploading the videos, I automatically se me Automatic. automatically put the, the video on the playlist. So awesome, no, awesome. yes, and it's an awesome person, and yes. It's so awesome that he makes the, 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 even that he has a name on the, on the Yonlu tribe because he was like yeah. adopted. He, he was there, dude. He doesn't really? play the, the, the Aboriginal songs. He makes his own patterns, his own with the like, nature. It's their language. He uses their language to create his own pattern. That's, it's that's exactly that. it. That's exactly it. Like, it's a bit what I do, like, for, for instance, like, I've been playing a lot, like, also f- from that conversation I was saying, like, um, people literally tell, no, oh, that's a copy cut of uh, Zalem, or that's a copy cut of Gautier, or whatever. Like, it's hard sometimes to come up, come up with new, new things, because they really explored everything in this style. So uh, one day I was driving and I listened to this, like some years ago, I listened to this song from uh, Kendrick Lamar, Be Humble. Sit down, be humble. And this... Like, I, I, nowadays, this is my comfortable zone, but I, it was really... Because it wasn't so long ago, and I was missing like this discovery, this uh, you know, like new sounds and new grooves, and it was kind of 
in the same style, but with mm -hmm. a different approach, with a different, and it's cool. Like, um, I remember back in the day, Ditch to Ditch was amazing for you. Like, every year I was progressing, like, it was ridiculous because you go there and you see so many people like you, like me, like really fans of the instrument. And everyone has their own color. Everyone has their own trick and you dig from everyone. Like even Houdi, for example, he was playing like his approaches, like even using flutes and everything. Like it was amazing. It was amazing. Yes, and 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 this this thing about the the that you you sound like this, you sound like that. I have this also because they always relate me with William Thorne. Like I'm always asking him, and and all I'm, every single time I'm like this. No, that that fucker has. Very busy time, and I barely talk to him. I, I, know, he, I know. He doesn't. He doesn't want to make an interview because he quit the didgeridoo for a for a while. So, ah, but dude, he's playing like he's playing a lot, man. Like, uh, when was it? I, I was with him uh, not so long ago. Yeah, yeah, I knew. I knew. He came to my place, dude. He's playing a lot. Like, all another thing, like. He was also influenced by the, the Frenchies. Like he, there was a period of his time, he was living in um, in Lyon, the city of uh, the uh, where uh, like um, Gautier was living there, and it's uh -huh. the same city of um, where um, ah wow, you Jazzy Julien has his workshop and where he lives. So he added wobbles to his playing, and dude. Wobbles and drop octave. Like you mixing see? stuff from hundred. Like nowadays, like he's one of the, my f like nerding out. He's one of my favorite. Uh, like I, how would I say this? Like technically, more like he's he's got it all. Like he can play like anyone. It's, and it's, it's a like, bit like if you know all the colors, it's easier for you to compose. In my opinion, like if you know, not to, to mimic, but at least understand how he, it's a curiosity of mine. I mm -hmm. like because sometimes you don't need to know the how and focus more on the, the why, like the motive. Exactly. But my motive is I want to express myself. Like this is a, a way of speaking, you know, like as we were saying, accents, whatever, like where you come from, it's a way of speaking. It's a, it's a language. And you need to know how, how to, like, the, as you asked, the more languages I speak, the easier it was for me to, to get information and to reach out to other people. And introducing this, tra translating this to the digital, the more techniques you can understand at least how, how to do, like which part of your body, which part of your tongue is producing that sound. In your own creation, you'll be, like, and this is just a bit, dude, contemporary didgeridoo, if you think about it, has like, what, 30 years, 25? Contemporary, yeah. not traditional. Like, I think less than that. 25, at least. I play for like, uh, doesn't, uh, I play for like 16 years. Like, it's, like, there was already a world before I started playing, so... Anyway, it was, it was not a big world. It was a little bit more because it was only in Europe. Mostly, yeah. Yeah, mostly in Europe because uh, I uh, this guy, I Stephen Kent. I mm -hmm. thought he, Stephen Kent, yeah, yeah. I thought I he never was, met the dude. I think I thought he was from the U.S., but no, he's from the U.K. And he started to play. He recorded a, a, a CD, a right. professional one, in '88. I was '88. Yeah, <laughs> I, I wasn't born yet. Yeah, so that's fucking crazy. So, yeah, it was only over there. There was a few players. Yeah, it was in UK, Germany, France, and it was growing over there in Europe. But then yeah. it, it jumped the Atlantic and for say... I think it was mostly due to Andridge. Like, 
Andrej, when he went there, like, it was, it was a big thing. Like, even for them, I, I, I don't reckon that the level was as good as when Andrej was, was there because, like, he had, what, Chad Butler uh -huh. mostly as a maker. But the level, I'm talking about the level, you know, like, because even here in, in Europe, you had, UK, you had, like, my opinion and my knowledge, for sure there's more, but back in 2007, 8, let's say, UK, you had Jonathan Coop, mm -hmm. in France, uh, I'm not, uh, not going to go to France yet, so in Germany, you had the guys from Analog Birds, Mm -hmm. And uh, more, my, 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 my German, German, uh, I don't know more. Spain was really big. Like they had a big festival called Ibort. It was okay. really big. And you had Marcus Andreo, Ivan Nicolai, uh, Carlo Catano was spreading out. Carlo is my neighbor, dude. He's from Canary Island. And dude, I love his musicality. Like what he brought to the, like I do flutes on the, the beatbox because of that dude. Like many people, like Koji, many people thought, ah, I do flutes because of you. Nah, dude. Carlo Catano was the first dude I saw playing a flute on a didgeridoo because he plays nay flute. Ah, that's what same. you took my words from my mouth. <laughs> yeah. That, that son of a gun, it's so awesome. Uh, His style, uh, like, he's really rich. He's really, it's like, very, very crazy, that guy, because it's just. Spanish dude, but from the island is very influenced on the Middle East music. Yes, yes. So crazy. And if I'm not mistaken, he, he's like he's got a musician background, like he plays other instruments, mm -hmm. and that helps, dude. Like yeah, the nay, the nay with, with no, the... that was late in his life, and he added that already as an established player. But what This I mean is like. He was a, like he knew what how to compose. He knew about like things that I never knew. Like I was I was a skate rat. I was I had an amateur sponsorship. And I was skating my ass off every day, and then I discovered the instrument. And I like when I like something, I I really dig into it. You know, like and the did really changed my life. As a multi drum player, myself. Ooh, no, 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 no. How was for you? For, uh, like this example, I all, I all, I, I was a chingada madre. Yo ya estaba haciendo busking mm -hmm. when Will came, came and said, Don't play side, play front side and okay. do this. Tra, 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 tra. And it was very complicated for me. It took me like okay. three months or five months to change my position and started to play drops. I have seen you uh, playing drops so fucking awesome. So how was that transition? Okay, so basically, uh, this is not an excuse, but I believe it's due to this. I always have a knack for this side because when I was a kid, when I was really young, I had a facial, like this side of my face blocked, like even smiling and everything, I tend to, to lift more this side of my face. Mm -hmm. And when I started ditch, playing ditch, like there was nobody saying, hey, dude, you play it like this, you play it like that, no. But I, I remember seeing everyone playing on the front, and even when I met Tiago, he said, dude, just play it on the front, like forget about side playing, like it's more rich. When I met Gauthier, when I met Zalem, like the same information, <laughs> and I was stubborn, I was stubborn, because there's some cool aspects also about side playing, like you're faster, like you, you don't really need to heat up, like the thick, like the space between the lips and the teeth is so short that pop out, you just play. Yeah. But not just for multi-drone, but also for, um, you know, to wobbles, like to play the, like if you play it on, on the front, you're way more rich. But it, de it demands more from the body. But you'll learn more from yourself, from your, from your, you'll learn how, like for us, I think it was more, okay, I was doing this and now I'm more conscious of what I'm doing. 
this mm-hmm. is how I got. I still need like I play on the front, normal dig, drop, whatever. I'm not a big multi drone player. Like if it's okay. a multi drone didgeridoo, I can play. I can do my own my own music, my own approaches. I can play. My didgeridoo, relating to that story, when uh, 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 when William was living in Lyon. Mm-hmm. I had the didgeridoo finishing with um, Julien, who gave me a, like a, he helps me. It's kind of a sponsorship that we have. It's amazing. Uh, if you want my models, you can just ask him. Give me the D model of Joao or give me the C model of Joao. At least they'll do exactly the same. Uh, mm. He's amazing, like as a person and as a crafter. And he was almost finishing, and I was like, dude, can you ask William to make a multi drone uh, mouthpiece on that didgeridoo? Is it even possible? And they said, yeah, fuck it. And they did it. As a normal playing, it lost the kind of the subtleness of the French didgeridoo, like the white boar, like those, you know, Alex didgeridoo, the didge element. Even you, Jazzy, if you go pick a normal mouthpiece, the didgeridoo from him, they're amazing. They're like the, the drone, the response is amazing. That ditch, due to that to mouthpiece, it lost a bit of the crispiness that it should have on the normal playing. And the multi-drone part, it, you can only be comfortable on the drop octave and on the fifth. Like if you, not the fifth, like uh, it's it's an F, so it's the third, it's the third uh, minor drop. Like, so you can drop, bam, boom, bam, 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 you know, at least you have mm-hmm. three keys that you can bounce on. Like I can, I need a bit of like time before to enrich my list because it's more punchy, even to the the thickness. But dude, William was here like a, a month ago and he grabbed the dig and it was amazing. It was amazing. Lo hizo cantar como que ay. Yeah, yeah, dude. No, 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 no. It's 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 so awesome. I... Ah, fuck. The distances, the distances. Yeah, distances. man. Because if well, I was over there in Europe, I will have more uh, facility. So you can try my didgeridoos. So another, uh, because I'm, I'm, what I'm doing, I'm like uh, combining styles most, and techniques. Yeah. Most of the people, most of the people think that multi drone didgeridoo has to be like this. No, no. Yeah. Nick, no. or like, or if it has concave shaped mouthpiece, is a multi drone didgeridoo? Not oh. specifically, not specific. Like, no, there's it's, a it's, lot of there's a lot of science in it, and you know it way better than me. Uh-huh. But uh, I I feel like you can. What I did, for example, they had to change the bell for it to work. Uh-huh. Otherwise, I would just fuck up the ditch. Because it's not, as you said, it's not just the the multi the the mouthpiece. It's also like some parts of the shape has to respect some rules, and also the tuning. Like if you want multi drone, if you really want multi drone, you have to think about tuning of toots, um, the first toot and the second toot. I, I don't know the the relationship now. You know for sure, but uh, exactly like. It's, it's like uh, in the strings instruments, the cello, the viola, and violin. If you want to play a piece of violin in a cello, it's possible. It's gonna be very hard because you have to play in the bottom of the of the sure. the, 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 the arm of the cello to have the pitch of the violin, or you can play a cello in a viola, but it's gonna be it's gonna sound a little weird because it's not low enough. I get what you mean. I get what you mean. It's the same. It's, it's kind of the same, but uh, for for instance, you can still have the playability and the sound of a normal dig. Yes. Uh, yes. For example, Tiago has a beautiful one, also made from uh, you, Jazzy, from uh, yeah, Julia. I was, I was gonna ask for that one. Dude, that did you do? Amazing! Like the playability and the. Um, the the multitude of sounds like you can really go to the octave to the third like you can you have many keys there and when uh-huh. you play the normal drone it's it's as you were playing in 
a short a normal, uh, a normal yeah but short neck not so yeah I think that it was a collaboration between uh, Will and, and Julian. Exactly, it was. No, yeah. but that was specific, like they made it specifically to be a multi-drone. Like mine mm -hmm. was already made and William stepped in and carved a little bit the, the, the bell the and the mouthpiece. Uh, oh, the, the bell. okay, okay. Le metió mano a todo el yeridu, entonces sí lo... Sí, William. I don't know if it was him yes. or if it was just Julien, but I know like it had to change. Like the features of the dig had to change in order to be able to drop the octave. Sí, sí, sí. Uno, un, uh, didgeridoo has to, ya lo iba a decir en español. A didgeridoo multi drone has to be uh, designed, made the design on Digimo or whatever program do you want to use first over there and then go to the wood. Or fiber, or paper, or whatever. Okay. Agave, it has or to be redefined, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it has to be like that. Because if you have one digital that is good playing, and then you want to you want to transform that to uh, a specific interval, or uh, no, don't do that. You're gonna yeah. mess. It doesn't work. Yeah, you're gonna mess up the ditch. Lo vas a cagar todo bien feo, así bien. Lo vas a hacer todo bien. <laughs> Uh, that's basically what, what happened to mine almost. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. No, but it's 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 amazing. Like um I can send you some videos. I even used it in uh, Kai Allen uh, in my group. There's a song called Oposh where I, I do the drop. I can sh show you the so far video uh, okay. if you want to attach to this one. Um And it works, it really works as a normal didgeridoo because I, I mostly play normal didge. But sometimes, in order to make the songs darker or to just bounce around, like yeah. here it's like midnight, so I, I cannot play anymore. But... No, 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 no problem. But dude, like, yeah, like I wish. I wish I can, I, I'm gonna get back to the ditch more, like even put out some music because I've been missing. Also this year I had a beautiful uh, invitation to play in, in, a, in a festival that you know, in the US. I had to decline it due to work, but uh, hopefully next year or the next, the, the year that comes, I'll try to be there in the States. And if you can, no, 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 um, probably 2025. Probably mm. 25. No, no, it's, it's, uh, I won't say. I was, gonna, I was invited this year, but I had to postpone it. And I think it next was, year they already fixed the, the log. So, yeah. It's not going to be impossible, but it's going to be improbable that I will return to the US. Okay. Do uh, uh, the immigration shit. And uh, now that we are losing the respect to the US. So it, we have these uh, political stupid things. Yeah. And it's, it's getting harder and harder. It's very hard. I have to have uh, like $5,000 in my bank account. I have to uh, do this. I have to do that. I have to prove that I have money. I have to prove. It's like China. It's like other big countries. Like when I went to China and everything, it has to, it has to be like that as well. Yes, it's like if you want to go to Europe, you you put your uh, Portugal passport, and they say, mm, "Okay, what are you doing? Work or or tourist?" It's tourist. pleasure, to, yeah, yeah, pasale. And they see, <laughs> they see me with a Mexican face, with an indigenous face. When I say I'm gonna go to tourist, please, I get you. Go I get you. To the room, to the little room, we're gonna expect you. And I'm going to be like there over there in a lot of time. And I have a, a problem with deportation, so it's t more tougher. So mm, hopefully, hopefully. Hopefully, hopefully. Let's hope for the best. Yeah. Uh, you Do you have a record, a music record in some places? You have Bandcamp, something, nothing? I have a SoundCloud, but it's so old, my friend. Like the last oh, things I have, I have, uh, I have two CDs. Uh, they're available also on my SoundCloud. Uh, I think they're free, or yeah, they're free. Uh, if not, people can just ask me, and I'll send it with 
pleasure, no worries. If you want the physical format, you can ask Greg from Digital Passion or I can send it to you. Um, and uh, my latest things was with Kai Allen two years ago. And we have a couple of uh, song, uh, no, four songs with a nice quality on our platforms on uh, uh, SoundCloud, Bandcamp, and also on YouTube. We have some nice videos, and it's probably the last, uh, the latest things I have done with the Dig. But uh, stay tuned. I'm coming back. Ah, huevo, cabrón. Ah, huevo. I was wondering, this doesn't have nothing to do with it, you do, but also like it. Mm -hmm. And the uh, handpan, do you still? Yes, uh, actually, I have one. It made the, it's really fresh. And I made a video not so long ago. It's on YouTube. It's on, uh, I can send you the link. It's on du Duji Mago's page. It's a Portuguese mm -hmm. maker, an amazing mm -hmm. friend, amazing person as well. Uh, his, like his instruments have a, a different vibe, you know, a different energy. Like when you uh -huh. play them, you get really, oh, wow. So yeah, it's an instrument I I play like I would say I can nowadays I'm playing more than the ditch, like when I get home or whatever. And because it's not as heavy sounding, I can play in yeah. my apartment later. Because the ditch, like when I when I practice, I believe my 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 neighbors they just want to kill themselves. Like I must be <laughs> shit. But anyway, you have to be here in Mexico. You can make noise. There is two in two in the morning, uh, one in the morning, and there's a fucking noise around. Fuck you, I say. <laughs> we, we get used to that fucking noise on the, the Mexican music, or it's the reggaeton and all that shit, the, the cartel music. Ah, fucking, ah. Sometimes I, I go to the nature. Like, what I like to do is I grab my ditch, I go to a nice spot, like, or near the beach, or mm. just. Cause and I have my own private thing or with a friend. Cause uh, it's hard. Like if I if I practice at, at home or anything, it must be hard for my neighbor for sure. For sure. <laughs> anyway, my brother. Okay, Mr. Joao, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Very you. Much. Uh, last words for the community, and if they, if it is in Spanish, the better. Bueno, voy a intentar en español. Uh, en primer lugar, gracias por estar haciendo esto, porque la llama, la, el llamamiento del DIGS tiene que llegar a más, más gente y condensar esta información a estos players, a esta gente que ha influenciado el DIGS, uh, es perfecto. Eh, gracias a ti, gracias a todos los que te ayudan. Eh, si estás solo, hola. <risa> Formidable. Uh, consejos. Practiquen, 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 porque es un instrumento que quien, quien lo toca sabe que si, si te quedas un rato, una semana sin tocar, lo perdes la, la boca, la, la embocadura. Entonces, mi consejo es, si amas este instrumento como yo, si quieres hacer música, practica, porque vale, vale la pena. Y es practicando que se descubre cómo hablar con nosotros, nuestros colores y, y nuestra música, porque hoy es muy, muy, senc muy más sencillo, más fácil de llegar a un nivel, porque está todo en la Internet. Cuando empecé no, no había tanta información, ya había la posibilidad de viajar en Europa y todo, pero la, es muy, la, la multitud de gente que... que que trae información y todo ha uh, crecido y bueno es, es eso practiquen <ríe> y descubran vuestro vuestro propio sonido es mi consejo Jonathan Antonio Martínez Machine Joao Jardín un gran abrazo brother bye, bye, bye.